Welcome to this pick a card reading and in this reading we're going to be asking what are their feelings and intentions. So these are two of the five questions that I ask, uh, really six because I usually ask for advice or guidance as well, that I look at in my personal love connection reading which you can find at my website. I've linked to that below if you ever consider um, purchasing a personal reading which would be specific to you. Although I do f hope that you can find a helpful reading here. So we do have three options. Again, we're answering the questions, what are they feeling for you? And what are their intentions? So this is meant to be a romantic reading. So this is either a relationship that you're in romantically or someone that you're romantically interested in. Uh, or maybe you're not interested in them, but you think they're, that they're interested in you and you just want to understand it more. You know, whatever the situation is for you in particular. So we'll be tuning into that. Now, there are three options. Option number one actually has two cards coming up to represent it. And that those cards are the Eight of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. So these two cards wanted to come out together for group one. Group two is the High Priestess. Let me focus here a little bit better. And group three is the moon card. All right, so I'll pull back a moment so you can consider. We've got group one is the eight of cups and the ten of pentacles. Group two, the high priestess. And group three is the moon. I've started recording my pick cards in this vertical manner because as some of you know, I'm living in my van. You can see I'm out in nature today. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I've had to close the windows though because it's super, super windy today. And I just feel like the holding it vertically is easier <laughs> for my personal circumstances. I don't have a table to clamp, um, you know, like a holder to to hold my phone in place while I record. But anyway, this is just work. what works for me. And most people actually watch these videos on their phone anyway. So it's also more comfortable, I would think. For you to hold it while you're watching although some of you might not like this part of it where i'm moving around but <laughs> whatever life's not perfect is it so we have to sort of adjust all right the timestamps are going to be below as well as uh, my links if you want to check out my other offerings and things that i've got going on that said let me go ahead and get into your readings Okay, welcome group one to your reading. You chose the Ten of Pentacles and Eight of Cups combo there. Let me try to get the camera better so you can see. Um, I'm parked in the shade because it's just much cooler, but I think you can basically see what I've got going on here. Um, so I have pulled some initial cards. We're going to look at their feelings first. Their energy is here. The shared energy is here and how they're seeing you because this is going to be from their perception, is this card over here, the Hermit card. So this is interesting to me. So if this doesn't immediately click to you, then this is not your reading. But what I feel like is this is someone who actually is already involved with someone else, and they're kind of happy. It could be like a dating situation. For some of them, it feels like maybe a budding relationship, like a fairly new relationship that they're involved in. And they see you as being single, and um, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if they necessarily want to throw it in your face that they're in a relationship, but it's sort of like they're happy in their relationship. They feel, I, th I think they feel like both of you are kind of empowered right now, you know? So it's like they, you, you seem to them to be pretty content being single, as this hermit card over here, you're like just sitting in your wisdom, you know, enjoying your life. The shared energy, of course, is the king of wands. So both of you are kind of like in control of your lives right now. It's not like they see you as like sad or desperate because you're single. They think, well, you're single and that seems to be what you most want. But at the same time, I feel like they want you to be envious of them. You know, I'm an intuitive tarot reader, and I'm just kidding. That vibe, like, they want you to be envious of the fact that they're in a relationship and they're happy, which makes me wonder about their relationship because 
if they were really that happy, why would they need you to be jealous? So I'm just going to dip into that for a moment. So this is their energy and their relationship. This is the shared energy with the person they're with. And this is that other person's energy. So I feel like it's interesting. Like this is a relationship where there is a sort of detached energy between the two of them. But they both like it that way. So yeah, they're a couple. But I think even, you know, in their relationship, themselves and their partner are sort of in a hermit energy as well. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's like maybe that's what both of them really need. Like they need both like actually kind of want a relationship where there's a lot of space or a lot of kind of freedom to be individuals and kind of like, you know, they might both have busy schedules or just a lot of other things going on. I do feel like they and their partner genuinely are very interested because they're both turned toward each other. You know, this person is turned this way. This person is turned this way. They do care a lot of be about each other. So why, where is it that they want you to be jealous? They definitely want you to understand that they're happy. So maybe it's not jealousy per se, but they... They are proud about the fact that they've gotten to a place in their life where they're happy. They're proud of being in a relationship that works for them. They're proud of having found someone who loves them. So I guess that's where they're coming from. It isn't necessarily that they want you to be jealous, but they want you to see that they've succeeded in becoming happy, basically. And how do they want that to affect you? The lover's card. Well, they want you to be happy for them. Yeah, the lover's card and the star card. Um, you know, I feel like this person still kind of would be flattered to think that you have romantic feelings for them or at least care about them on some level or find them attractive. They do find you to be attractive here with the three of wands. But they feel like you would probably never really settle down with them. And so they're just like, well, whatever. It didn't work out between the two of us, but we can still love each other and want the best for each other, basically. All right, so I think I've got a good understanding of their feelings. I, wanna, I mean, they do find you attractive. Let me see what... Yeah, I think in terms of like actual romantic feelings for you, they feel like it would be too difficult to fulfill that, basically. Yeah, you are way too independent for them. Like they do need someone who understands their own need for independence and someone who can be, you know, like cope on their own, someone who's not like super codependent, you know, but, but at the same time, like... You're just too much of uh, an individual for them or too much of someone who has to do your own thing or go your own way, chart your own, own course. So in, in any case, I do feel like there is an attraction to you. They find you to be attracted. But do they have like feeling feelings? I know that's like a sort of a subtle distinction, but I don't really feel like they're like in love with you or have a crush on you in a like feeling kind of a way it's more like you're attractive I like you as a person I want you to understand that I'm happy and I want you to be happy for me that I'm happy so I think we've already gotten a little bit here of their intentions towards you which are just what I said they want you to be happy but let's just you know that is a second part of the reading here so let's get into it a little bit more what are their intentions they want to communicate with you. They uh, want to be thought-provoking to you in some way. They want to pick your brain. But it's almost like they want... Uh, you know, they want to, to have conversations with you that make you think, but that are a challenge to you, right? They're wanting to challenge your mind. There's a lot of mental energy. The Magician card is associated with the sign of Gemini. Then we have two swords cards here. I'm sorry, it's dark. Um, why do they want to do that? They want to provoke your mind, make you think about things, 
challenge your mind. I think that this person is very impressed with your thought processes. You seem to them like a very enlightened person or some someone who like has a highly developed mind. That's one of the things they, that they really like about you and they feel like they really relate to you. But there's something right now that I feel like they're really interested in that their partner isn't that interested in. But they feel like it's something you would be interested in. Although they also feel like you wouldn't exactly agree with them about that topic, but it would make for a good discussion. So they want to have some sort of thought-provoking discussion with you is what I'm getting. All right, finally, any sort of advice uh, to group one about this person? We have the Princess of Pentacles. I think this is like, you know, continue to feel your value here. Know that this person does value you. You know, they think you're beautiful inside and out. And, um, you know, just as an advice card, the Princess of Pentacles is saying, like, you know, keep slowly and steadily doing what's best for you because you are you seem to be going in the right direction in life. You're creating a beautiful sense of stability for yourself. And it does look like you have, like, a good level of confidence, and that confidence is growing. And that advice to you is to continue along that path. This person does want to see you happy just as much as they want you to see them as happy. So I'm sorry I interpreted it in the beginning as wanting you to be jealous because I don't really think that's what it is. But hopefully you stayed till the end so you could get the full message. All right, group one, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. You'll always know it's me if you see this tattoo on my thumb, by the way. All right, bye guys. All right, those of you who chose the High Priestess, this is your reading. So I've got the cards laid out, and like I said in the intro, we're going to be looking at their feelings for you as well as their intentions. So I pulled some cards. This is sort of like how they're viewing the situation. This is how they're viewing themselves right now, the Ace of Wands and the Princess of Pentacles. This is how they're viewing the shared energy. And this is how they're viewing your energy, the Prince of Pentacles and the Emperor. So there's kind of a similar vibe here because we have a mixture of um, fire and earth on each side. I think they feel like both of you kind of feel similarly about the situation right now. Um, I don't know. It's almost like this Four of Cups. It, it reminds me of the Romantic era. Um... <laughs> How do I describe that if you don't know what I mean by that? Like, when we romanticize despair, almost, it's like when we get lovesick and lovelorn, but we're, like, romanticizing it, sort of. It's like, oh, my love life isn't going the way that I want it to, but, it, but in a way, it's like you're almost, like, swimming around in those emotions of despair, but it's like, because it creates so much emotion, like an overabundance of emotion... It's almost like, you know, reveling in it in a way. Or finding what's poetic about it, I guess. The poetry of despair. <laughs> um, in their energy towards you, we have the Ace of Wands and the Princess of Pentacles. Like, they're, they are desiring you right now. And I feel like they want to make you feel valued. So they might want to do things like write you poetry and things like that. Yeah, we have the Magician card coming out. Like, I feel like they want to be able to put into words how they're feeling about you in a way that like makes you feel beautiful um so yeah i think they want to make like sort of old-fashioned romantic gestures yeah i mean the four of cups a lot of people interpret this as a negative card i don't necessarily always interpret it quite like that because there's an overabundance here and it gives us a moment to sort of sink in in a safe way with our emotions. There are a lot of emotions here. The chariot relates to the, um, the sign of cancer. So it's like they feel safe, emotionally safe. You know, the fours are all about stability. They feel emotionally safe and secure here. And they feel that you also feel emotionally safe and secure with them. It's like I'm safe to fully explore my feelings and I want to explore them and for them they're wanting to explore it I think maybe through like you know poetry art music stuff like that it's like they they really love feeling these feelings because it feels poetic and beautiful you know like 
they're inspired. There is a little bit of energy here of even of maybe you're being their muse or something like that if there's someone who is artistically creative. Otherwise, they might be reading poetry that other people have written or listening to love songs or things like that. Or like even if they're like out in nature, they'll be thinking about you and <laughs> I don't know, like stuff like that. Like there's a sort of muse energy. Um, the way that they're viewing you, that I think they view you as a little bit more practical, like not necessarily, they don't necessarily see you being super like poetic and in love with love in quite the same way, not that it bothers them, but they see you as someone who's like really taking control of your life right now. Um, someone who has, you know, really a lot of confidence and a lot of boldness to chart their way in life. But in some sense, I mean, in some sense, you probably have established yourself uh, securely in the world. But in other ways, you're kind of just starting out or, you know, learning new things or taking on something new in the material world. This is probably career and or finance related. For some of you, this could also be like taking control of your health or it could be all of the above. But they really see you as kind of bold and confident, but like using that boldness and confidence towards very practical gains. Like, I'm trying to improve my career, or maybe you're going to school, uh, or like you're going to the gym a lot. Those types of things. Uh, getting your house clean and organized, like being efficient. Getting your life together. They feel like you're like really focused on like basically getting your life together is a good, good way of summing it up. And they find it to be impressive. They... They feel like whatever you're doing in your life lays a good groundwork for the potential between the two of you. So even though you might be more practical and they're more like romantic, like, you know, John Keats, you know, t type of thing over here. Um, you know, they think that your practicality towards life actually opens doorways for the two of you to spend time together you know, for whatever that means. Like maybe if you get into a better financial situation, then the two of you will be able to enjoy better times together. Or if your health is better, then you'll be able to get out and go travel and do things that require, I don't know, like having good stable health, things like that. So that's kind of their mindset in terms of feelings right now. Anything else about their feelings for you before we get into their intentions? They feel very close. They feel very, very bonded to you. And what's interesting is that, like, I feel like maybe the two of you ha know some of the same people in common. But I feel like they know these people better. It's like they have a group of friends or associates. And those people know who you are. But these are people that they're, like, interacting with or talking to on a regular basis. And, um... It's not that they don't feel close to these people, but it's like, in a way, they feel, you know what it is? Maybe they do feel close to these people, but they want to have that level of closeness with you. Like, they want, they feel the potential for a deep bond. They kind of already feel like the two of you are deeply bonded in some way. Like, there's an emotional tie that feels strong and safe and secure. They want to explore that more. Oh, here's another thing. Like, there are lots of people in their life that they like to interact with in groups. You know, like group activities, like you know, a group of friends coming over, spending time together, that type of thing. With you, they want it to be just the two of you, though. I think that's sort of primarily for them what different, differentiates you as like a romantic interest. Um... Because, like, for example, if this is someone who is attracted to females, they could spend time with a group of females. And it's like, you know, they like the group thing. But the reason, let's assume for a moment that you're a female, they're like, but with you, I kind of want to explore what it's like to hang out with you alone. And it's not really to have sex. It's more about creating that deep emotional intimacy and getting to know you better one-on-one. -on -one. That, for them, is what sets you apart as, okay, this is a person who I have a romantic interest in versus I just like this person as a person and a friend. So they're definitely setting you apart from the others in that way. 
Um, have they spoken to these other people about you? Yes or no? I think they have. What have they said? I think they've definitely told people that there's an attraction and that they feel like maybe the attraction is stronger on their part and you seem like you have a bit of a wall up. I think they... I think they may have also told people that you seem maybe to be exploring other options or something. Or that you're disappointed about a past lover. That they know something about a breakup that you've been through. But yeah, they've told people, like their friends or whatever, that they're interested in you. And that they feel like there's a, a chemistry. And with the Seven of Cups, often that can be... Like, we feel that chemistry, but we haven't openly expressed it yet. So they might even be telling people that. Like, oh, I can tell that, well, like, we, it's just, like, the way that we look at each other. I can tell that there's something there. Or, like, I just feel that, you know, like, feel the vibe between the two of us. There's something there. But at the same time, High Priestess group seems to be, like, you know, putting up a wall. Maybe they're not over their ex yet. Maybe they're not ready to date. But... They also have told people that they feel more passionate about you than they think you do about them. But I don't think it bothers them to be the one that's more interested in, in you, actually. So what are their intentions? I think persistence, you know, like they definitely want to give this a chance. Um, and to them, that means allowing you to sort of pace yourself and take your time. Because like, like I said, they seem to understand that you might be still getting over someone and or just like not quite ready to plunge into dating or not quite ready to plunge into a relationship. But they're not going to give up. You know, they're like, okay, if you need to keep your walls up for now, that's okay. But I'm going to be persistent. I'm not going to give up. And I'm going to keep, you know, taking my chances with you, basically. Yeah, this person definitely wants to make sure you're aware that they are attracted to you. Like they don't, they are afraid of saying it out loud to you right now, but they also want to make sure you're not misunderstanding it. It's like that. they want you to know without any doubt that they are attracted to you like that. <laughs> so they're trying to give you signs and clues into that currently. All right, so I think that's all the time we have for the High Priestess group. I'm going to move on. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to get a personal reading, those links are below. And you'll always, we always know you're watching one of my videos if you see this tattoo on my thumb. All right, thanks so much, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome. This is the reading for those of you who chose the Moon card. Um, so first we're looking at what their feelings are for you and then we'll get into their intentions. So this is all from their perspective. This is how they're viewing themselves right now. This is how they view the shared energy and this is how they're viewing your energy right now. I mean, I feel like they feel sort of like regretful. They feel a little bit, um, what's the opposite of optimistic? They feel pessimistic. They feel pessimistic about things right now. Like, I think with this Princess of Wands in the middle, like they feel like maybe the two of you have been a little bit hot-headed towards each other. They they think that that hot-headedness maybe comes from a passion, though. Like, okay, we got mad at each other, but the only reason we got mad is because we actually have passion for each other. Or, in one case, they might have felt one of you said something, like stuck your foot in your mouth and didn't even really intend you know, to say something hurtful, but it sort of like bothers this person. Something like that. They feel like there's some been some sort of either purposeful or accidental pushing of buttons. And I don't know, it's just got them feeling kind of down in the dumps over here. And the way that they see you is the nine of wands. They see you as someone who is really going to stand your ground and not be a doormat. So th I think they're kind of like, well, I never wanted you to feel like you were a doormat to begin with. And they're kind of just like, why did you 
come to that conclusion like that was never my goal. I never had the goal for you to feel like a doormat. I never, you know, wanted you to have to feel defensive or that you, you know, couldn't trust me or I don't know that you had to explain yourself to me. Like they feel like you feel that way though. Like you feel almost um, hostile towards them because of like, well, why do I have to explain myself to you? basically. But on their end, they, they want this to be better. They're like, okay, maybe the next time we see each other, maybe the next time we'll interact, it'll be better. But this time around, you know, like there were some awkward things said or someone put their foot in their mouth or something like that. Um, let me understand things better here. So on a romantic level, let's get a little bit more information here. How does this person feel about you I think this person loves feeling confident um, they but they you have a level of confidence that they see as more stable and for them it's like their confidence comes in bursts you know like sometimes they're like that social butter butterfly super confident like really feeling themselves and then other times they're not. It's like they feel like the two of you have a different approach to confidence. Your confidence is more stable and enduring. Like you, your feather, feathers can't be ruffled. Like if someone put their foot in their mouth towards you, you would take it in stride more. But for them, it was like a little bit of an arrow to the heart, an arrow to their confidence or something. I don't know why this keeps coming up here. But it's like they want you to see them as attractive. And that's one of the things they're struggling with, with their confidence. They're, they're like, I don't really think that the moon group here is seeing me as hot. Like, I want them to think that I'm hot, but I don't, I think that they think that I'm not. <laughs> it's like, they feel like they've disappointed you or something. And they're like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you be disappointed in me? How dare you? And it's not even disappointed. It's almost like, eh. They feel like you feel eh towards them. Like, eh, who, eh, could take you or leave you. Don't really think about you that much when you're not around. That's how they think you feel towards them. And they don't understand it because they're like, how could you be so passe towards me? Because when we're around each other, it feels so, like, cataclysmic. It feels like... You know, every time we see each other or interact, like, it's a major turning point in my GD life. It's like my whole life is changing every time we're around each other. And you're just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> like, they can't make sense of it. They're like, what? The what is going on here? Like, what in the world is going on here that you are so bored by me? And I, I don't even think... They know that it's not that you're bored. You're just preoccupied. You have other things going on. But they kind of like want to be this like shiny object that you're focused on. You see, even like the sun is lighting up this car. They're like, hello, I am a shiny object. You should be paying attention to me. But like you're focused on other things. And uh, this person is having kind of a strong egoic reaction to it. It's kind of making them sad. It's sort of making them depressed, to be honest. So what um, are their intentions towards you? Their intention is to, like, fuel the fires of your attraction. They, they want to get your attention. They want to, like, show off in front of you, I think. Um, but they don't want it to look like they're showing off. They want you to like fall in love with them. They want you to be in love with them. They want you to focus exclusively on them. And that is their intention. They're going to do that through trying to pretend that they don't care as much. They're like, okay, I'll just kind of be blasé and act like I have other things that are just as important, even though you're the person who's coming in and being this, like, cataclysmic, life-changing, you know, lightning bolt energy every time I'm around you. I'll just pretend like that's not the case. Like, I'll just, you know, pretend like I've got it all together, you know. 
and I'm happy and I don't even notice the fact that you're not paying attention to me. <laughs> I don't know. This is a very interesting reading. Let me know in the comments if this makes sense. So what's the advice for the moon group here about their person? Well, we have the two of wands. Like, I think it's basically saying give them a chance, you know, if you aren't already. Like, you know, it makes sense to give them a chance. Like, maybe even, like, uh, be willing to strike up a conversation with them. The two of you would probably have a good conversation. I think you would have a lot to talk about as well. With a higher font, like, maybe it could be religion that you would talk about or spirituality or metaphysics or even politics. Um... You know, something where there's some sort of established knowledge, but also a desire to learn more. You have a lot of uh, things that you could talk about um, that would be enjoyable conversations. So that's kind of the basic advice. Like, strike up a conversation. Give them a chance. Um, all right. I hope that that helps, guys. If you want a personal reading, those links are below. And if you're watching my videos, if you want to know if it's me, just always look for the tattoo on my thumb. And you'll know that this is my video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.